What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is week eight of the locker room. The San Francisco Giantes are team building for Tom Z and his San Jose Sharpedos. Got a little bit of a battle of the bay going on here. The San Francisco versus San Jose matchup. Uh, we got a lot to talk about this week, guys, because there's a lot that went into the team building and prep of this. Let's start off by just pointing out the six mon I'm bringing this week, or uh, on that side of the screen over there, you can see I've got Mew, Home Yowner, Tefiti the Shaman, DMX the Toxapex, Remix the Ditto, Toys R Us the Haxorus, uh, who is my Z-mon, and Archeops, Big Burb, who is also a Z-mon. Uh, but not packing a Z item this week. On uh, above my head, you can see the 11 Pokemon that my opponent drafted. They are Landorus T, Rotom Wash, Como O, Scizor, Diancie, Meloetta, Swellow, Roserade, Rhyperior, Mega Houndoom, and Masharna. You guys know how I do. I normally tier kind of like the ones I think are most likely at the top and the ones least likely at the bottom. In the past, I've prior weeks, that is to say, I've been a little more confident in my tiering. This week, not so confident. And there's a lot of reasons for that we both have Pokemon that match up very well against some of our opponents team and not very well against the other of the opponents team so the nature of team building is you look for their threats and you kind of build how to beat their threats any of my Pokemon in theory could be threatening to a large amount of his Pokemon but his Pokemon are very diverse they round out each other very well uh, and there's a lot of momentum in this game so he his, the Pokemon he brings, I, I think a majority of the team building starts on his end. The Pokemon he brings are likely to be brought based on the likelihood that he thinks I bring checks for those specific Pokemon. Because I have, at the very least, one or two checks for every one of his Pokemon, but I can't bring all of them because his Pokemon are that well-rounded, that diverse. He's got a very good team. Um, when I started building for it is when I really started to realize that. Like, on paper, you look at all of them, yeah, they're all decent, but when you actually start getting into the thick of things, you kind of realize how much there is to go on there. Take the tiering with a grain of salt, because I'm not confident in it myself, and I might move stuff around just at when I'm talking about it. So, let's start off with the bottom row. Mega Houndoom and Masharna. Masharna is just a bulky psychic type. He's got another bulky psychic type that's probably better than Masharna, and that's Meloetta. They're both very similar Pokemon. Masharna has the added bonus of being able to be a cleric, which can't be said about the Meloetta, but Masharna is just a bulky psychic and I'm not particularly worried about it. It can't really hurt many of my Pokemon. It's sort of set up fodder a little bit. It's not weak by any means, but it's not going to be knocking anything out in one hit. Coverage not good enough to really threaten the majority of the team. My best bet is to just either whittle it or set up on it, and so I don't think it's likely that he brings it. He could. I mean, when it comes to fat mons, anytime you want to bring a fat mon, you could bring a fat mon. Then it's just a fat mon that's there and you got to deal with it. So that was sort of the same deal when I battled uh, Joey in week six. Um, I didn't anticipate Licky Licky. When he came, I was like, okay, Licky Licky's here. Like, it just means that he decided to bring a bulky Pokemon in that setting. And, and he did that because he had a strategy around playing around that. So if he opts to bring Masharna, fine. He's got a strategy around that. Maybe he wants to keep keep his Pokemon healthy. Maybe he wants a, a cleric. Uh, he sees one threat in particular, wants to uh, wish pass to it. I don't know, but you know, like I'm not sure why he would bring Masharna, but I don't think it's very likely. Mega Houndoom is the bigger point to bring up here. Um, it's his Mega, and it's, you know, it's fast, and it hits kind of hard, but, and it's Dark type, and Fire type, so it's good against Mew, it's good against Shaman, but ultimately I just don't think he brings it. The main reason for that being, if he wants to build a team that isn't afraid of Doug Trio, the only thing he needs to do is not bring Houndoom, because Doug Trio traps Houndoom, and threatens and traps and kills Houndoom, and outspeeds it. And there's nothing Houndoom can do about that. He can't run a different item because it's his Mega. So he can't be running a Shed Shell. He can't scarf it to trick me and outspeed me or anything like that. If I get Doug Dougie in against him, he's trapped and he dies to Earthquake. And there's nothing he can do about it. He could run Sucker Punch, but it's not going to take me out. And just in general, I don't see it likely that he brings it. Just because it's too weak to Dougie. And ultimately, it's kind of walled by Toxapex as well. So... Again, when you have an offensive Pokemon like Mega Houndoom, it's fast and hits hard, you can bring it and it'll be fast and it'll hit something hard. But I 
think it's too wallable. There's not enough tricksiness to it. It's a very standard build. It's gonna run Dark Pulse and a and Fire Stab, probably Flamethrower. Uh, and then you got Nasty Plot on it. You can put Sucker Punch on it. You can put a weird hidden power, coverage, something like that. Reasons he might bring it, um, good for Scizor, my, my Mega Scizor. Uh, decent switch into Shaman sometimes. I mean, if I'm packing Earth Power, it's not. It's, you know, it's it's frail, and I don't see it being a likely bring for him, but he could. Moving up to the next row, we've got, um, this is where it starts getting tricky, so I guess maybe now I'm not gonna go so much, like, less likely to more likely. I'm actually gonna start at the top and kind of work my way down. I think Landorus, I think Rotom Wash, and I think Kamo'o all come. Kamo'o, um, because... It's a great answer to, because of Bulletproof, almost exclusively. It's a good answer to Mega Scizor. It's a good answer to Blacephalon, uh, because Shadow Ball won't affect it, and it resists Flamethrower. So, and I can't run Hidden Power Fairy, because it doesn't exist. So the best I could do is HP Ice on it to have something for it. Just in general, it's a great Blacephalon bring. He's seen Blacephalon put in work this season. I think he wants a Blacephalon answer. That's a decent one. It's not the only one, uh, but it's a decent one for him to bring. So I think that's why it comes. It has lots of different setup options. Can be uh, defensive, can be physically offensive, specially offensive, can set up speed, can set up uh, attack or special attack with workup, life orb sets, Scarfed sets, although they're not great. It can be specs, uh, dragon dancing. It, he's got, it's got so many different setup options. It can really go any way with that. I think that benefits him. I think it's a potential answer to Haxorus. I know he's run Haban Berry, uh, at least at one point before this season. Uh, I think it versus um, Mono, and so it's it's a bring for him. It. Weirdly, it becomes a check to Haxorus, even though Haxorus is faster than it and hits harder than it. It can still be a check to it, depending on the set that he brings. So, can definitely, uh, if he brings it, I have to do a lot of scouting and figuring out kind of what it has for me. And that's sort of, um, I think, a really good reason for him to bring it. Rotom Wash, Scizor, Landorus. Uh, it's a Volt Turn core. It's a very well established Volt Turn core for a long time in OU and previous generations. A lot of these Pokemon have fallen to UU. Doesn't matter. It's still an established Volt Turn core. They cover each other pretty well. Um, and so I think it's pretty likely that all three of them come. The Scizor is one that I really want to talk about. Actually, I want to talk about the Landorus too. The Rotom, I think, just comes because it fits well into the team. I'm not particularly afraid of Rotom. Um, even relatively offensive sets, even though it's stab super effective, kind of struggle to break Toxapex, uh, but they, you know, can get momentum on it, Volt switching for like 50% and stuff like that, but I can just switch out. Um, but I have Shaman for it, and I don't think he'll have anything to really threaten Shaman, could trick it, but it doesn't super matter to me. Uh, we've got the, um, the Landorus is important to talk about, that's a Zemon, uh, and possible Z moves that we should be uh, on the lookout for. Continental Crush, um, Supersonic Sky Strike, Savage Spin Out. That one seems weird, but if you really do consider it um, really boosting the power, U-Turn's great, but to, you know, hit super effective against, like, my Mew or my Shaman, but it's it gets you out of the fight and hits you super effective, but then you are you don't get to stay in to finish off the job. They, he could potentially run Savage Spin out on that U-turn, stay in, do a, a hefty amount of damage, and then uh, get the momentum the turn after, after the threatening. But uh, that's less likely probably than either Tectonic Rage, Continental Crush, or Supersonic Sky Strike, just because those ones really high, have a high amount of pressure put on them. What I want... What I need to know about Landorus as soon as possible is what kind of set it is, and I can gather a lot of that information literally just by seeing the moves it has. I don't need to see him even use them, I just need to get Ditto in against it. Uh, Hidden Power Ice uh, won't one-hit KO a Dittoed Landorus, even though I have less HP than it, so technically it is a better version of itself than me. There are some times that that's not the case. Pokemon with no HP investment and a low HP stat 
uh, Ditto's 48 base HP with 252 um, EVs in it because that's one thing Ditto does, it copies the HP. Sometimes with low HP Mons, Ditto's a better version of it. Um, Swellow, for example. Uh, I take a hit from Swellow better than Swellow takes a hit from itself if I'm Dittoing it. So, um, but even despite that, if it's packing HP Ice, uh, my Ditto will survive that. So I can say pretty safely switch in against the Landorus, learn its set, and then immediately use that information. Um, it's a good speed tier against himself, which is nice. 91 uh, will outspeed with when I'm Scarfed Landorus uh, as Ditto. Will outspeed the Mega Houndoom, and Houndoom can't run a Scarf. Uh, and it'll outspeed Swellow if it's not Scarfed. And I really don't think Swellow is going to be Scarfed. The biggest reason for that being... As a physically offensive mon, can't break Toxapex, and as a specially offensive mon, it could, but only if it's modest specs. If it's timid specs, it won't. So, um, there's even more to that information later. So, uh, you see how this is sort of rounding around, right? Like, Ditto is going to be an important key player this week because a lot of his threats aren't good against themselves. Landorus, not good against itself. Scizor, not good against itself. Deancey, not good against itself. Um, Swallow it revenges itself etc you, you see what i'm getting at here right so uh, ditto will be important this week to learn a lot of sets depending on what he brings so the landorus i really need to get in and learn its move set if it's got hp ice i can safely assume based on the other moves that uh, well i can't safely assume anything just by knowing it has hp ice uh if i get in on it and it has fly that's supersonic sky strike you don't run fly if you don't have supersonic sky strike like you don't you know what I mean uh, if I see swords dance I instantly know it's not scarfed that's good knowledge really what I'm ga I need to gather here as soon as possible is are you scarfed if you're not scarfed you're probably a Z item you could be Yachi I'll play around uh, either scenario but you can sort of gauge based on looking at its moves rock isn't amazing against my team so if I see stone edge I'm gonna I know that my mind is going to go towards it being Continental Crush. Because Continental Crush is a good move. Uh, it'll hit a lot of things on my team neutrally. But, uh, and it's a decent way for Landorus to beat itself. Um, but without being Fly, which is not a great move once the Z item is gone. Whereas Stone Edge can be useful even with the Z item gone. So if I see Stone Edge, I'm going to be thinking in the back of my mind Continental Crush or Scarf. Uh, and then you just look for other things that wouldn't be on a Scarfed Mon typically, you know, like um, Sword sword Dance, for example. So, uh, that's the that's the Landorus. A lot of thought needs to go into Landorus at all times because it, it is a very diverse Pokemon as well. Defensive sets, offensive sets, and he Z'd it, which is a great move on his part. Let's move on to Scizor. I don't want to spend too long just talking about his team, but I need to. This is why I said at the beginning of the video, there's a lot to talk about here because his team is diverse and uh, pairs with itself very well. Scizor. I've run Scizor before. It's threatening as being a banded Pokemon, but it's also very scared of just everything having fire. Anything can just pack HP fire. Uh, so... <laughs> Do I think it's coming ultimately? Yes. Because uh, a powerful U-turn is good against... Um, Mew and Shaman. Uh, a powerful U-turn is useful in general. Slow U-turn is useful in general. It's got a powerful priority. So, uh, <laughs> do I think it's coming? Probably. But a lot of the time, Scizor feels threatened by, by just everything having fire. So I don't know that he's going to be using it as much of like a win con. Uh, and more of an expendable mon that if he plays it right can do a lot of damage and set up a lot of things on his team. So it's not a win con for him, which is why I couldn't put it in the top row, even though I think it's very likely that it comes. One thing you, of course, need to look out for in a situation like this. Um, I have Mega Scizor. He has Scizor. We've seen that matchup in the past. Scizors switch into each other incredibly well because they resist each other's stabs. So, in the past, what we've seen are, I think, John and Mono brought these against each other one time, and uh, I can't remember who. Maybe it was George and John? I, I forget. I think it was George and John. And George brought, um, 
like a fire berry natural power or nature power so that it uh, ate the berry and used a physical uh, fire type attack against the Mega Scizor and O code it and stuff like that. So, you know, you got to be on the lookout for that. Again, another situation where having Ditto come in against it could be useful. He's not going to see, or he's going to see that I don't have Scizor this week. And that could possibly be a mistake because Scizor could be very good against the Diancie. It could be very good against the Scizor. The thing is, it's it almost seems too likely for me to bring Scizor because of how good it is against some of his Mon. But it's... Landers is such a good switch in against it. Komo'o is such a good switch in against it. Scizor can be developed to be an anti-Scizor counter. And I... I just don't know. I mean, like, even the Swellow, like, even though my Steel typing would resist the Boom Burst, Swellow learns Heat Wave. So, I, I... There's Technician HP Fire, which is so likely on a Roserade Bring. I just don't feel like Mega Scizor would be safe ever. Because anything could decide to, you know, Rotom's gonna Willow it. And, you know, like... I, there's so much there that I just... I didn't feel like it made sense on the team. So, if he brings his Scizor... I'm going to be scouting to see whether or not it was a set designed to beat another Scizor, or whether or not he really just wants it for a powerful slow U-turn every now and then. Diancy, I don't know that I agree with myself having it on the second row here, but it's a good check to Haxorus. And I think looking at his team, he may be a little concerned with the Haxorus. So I know he's going to have a check for it. I think it's possible Komo'o is one of those. I think Landorus is the other. Uh, and then I guess Diancie he's just gonna keep in the back pocket to prevent me from ever just spamming outrage and threatening people out like that. Meloetta is an annoying, sort of specially bulky psychic type that doesn't that isn't weak to Shadow Ball. So, to could come could be a calm mindset. If I, if it's coming, it's a calm mindset. Like I, <laughs> that's that's what Meloetta does. Um, Although I would be lying if I said I wasn't super excited to potentially have to do this and switch it over to pirouette form. Uh, I don't think I will have to do that, but pirouette form's fast. Very fast. Fighting type. So, <laughs> you know, I might have to do that. Swellow, uh, I have in this weird in-between tier between the second and the third, and the reason for that is its uh, wings are too f***ing wide, so... <laughs> Like, why is its wing so wide? That's why uh, I have it in that weird tier. I couldn't move it in the middle of anything. It It's somewhere in between tier 2 and 3 anyway. It's a likely bring. Guts, physically offensive as a possibility, but its offenses aren't great, and it'd probably just get walled uh, by Tox Effects. So Boom Burst is probably the more likely bring. Scrappy Boom Burst beats uh, Blacephalon, obviously. Beats a lot of things, but the, the big problem I see there and why I didn't put it higher is a lot of my team uh, even if they're rocking offensive sets are pretty bulky just by nature and so it won't be getting a lot of one hit KOs with boom burst so for that reason it could be just sit in the back for the entire game and wait for chip damage on most things so it can try and clean up because it is very fast so if I see that I need to make sure that I have something faster than it in the back uh, a scarfed mon or something that will just take its hit and finish it off uh, it'll be a good reason for me to want to prioritize hazards to kind of get a little extra damage on it and force it into Oko range of every other mon that I have on the squad because it fails to Oko almost everything that I've brought. Roserade, um, Technician, HP, anything. Uh, could be annoying, can be pretty defensive, can be a Toxic Spike set, don't think it will be, but it could be. Grass type, not bad. It's a good switch into grass types, which are pretty decent against his team in general, so you might want it as an answer to Shaman, though there are others that he could do for that not too much to say about that we all know roserade long time friend of the gba has been drafted pretty much every single season it's good it's good mod and then riperior if he wants rocks it's a good rock setter Komo'o also i believe learns rocks so does deancy so does landorus any of those could be a rock setter riperior is bulky it's very 
tank oriented in its stats so it could run uh, a choice band set and be very difficult to switch into. Very difficult indeed, uh, but oftentimes what that ends up meaning is it goes one for one because everything on my team at speeds it, so everything will get a hit off on it. And a lot of my mon do have super effective coverage for it. So it might be able to eat a hit and then fire off an attack back. Uh, so it might go one for one, but generally speaking, when you're building a team, if you're almost any Pokemon could go one for one in the right circumstances, tier fives, that's like what you're aiming to do with a tier five, like trade your tier five for a higher tier mon of theirs. Uh, so just set it up in a way that it'll get one kill and then it can go down. That's fine. It's done its job. That's a lot of the time what tier fives do. That's what I think Rhyperior would do if he brings it, which is why I have it lower. So that uh, was a long time of me talking about that. I'll go over my team a little bit now. Um, so I hope you guys see why I'm, I, I took so long to talk about all those Pokemon because so many of them could come because so many of them do something. It really depends on the Pokemon that I brought. Uh, looking at my team, we got Toys R Us, the Haxorus, of course, Home Yowner, the Mew, DMX, the Toxpex, Defeaty, the Shaman, Archaeops, uh, which is Big Burb, and then Remix, the Ditto. Ditto running HP Ice as its hidden power move to allow it to have something against uh, the Landorus if the Landorus opts to run HP. That's mostly it. Uh, the next most likely hidden power users I see on his team are Meloetta and... Uh, Roserade. Roserade being the most likely. And Hidden Power Ice is also super effective against the Roserade. Hidden Power Fire would be also, uh, and could be useful for the Scizor, which would be a good switch into the Roserade if I copy the Roserade. But now we're like, we're going layers on layers, like that I'm gonna switch in, uh, copy the Roserade, it's gonna have HP Ice, and then he's gonna go to Scizor on it. It's too many steps, Whereas I, I want Remix to be able to exchange well with the Landorus because Remix has the potential to fill a gap of countering lots of Pokemon if I want it to. So I can, it's, it's not necessarily a win con for me this week. Any, I mean, any choice Scarfer can be a win con because at the end of the game, if you're the fastest and you can clean up, then any Scarfer could in theory be a win con at the end of the game for this specific week. I think it's important that I use Ditto to try and find out some information about specific sets of specific Pokemon. And so that's what I need it to do, and I need it to be able to do that for Landorus really well. We're going to move on to Big Burb. Big Burb's running a Focus Sash lead set this week. Head Smash, Hidden Power Ice, Endeavor, Stealth Rock with enough, H, uh, with enough speed investment to outspeed a modest Swellow. This could be an important consideration here, because... Timid spec Swellow won't break my specially defensive DMX. If it's modest, it can. It can do more than 50% to it. So it has to be modest, right? If it is, Big Burb's gonna outspeed it. So once I figure that information out, Big Burb can be useful. Though, I, I need to get a look at his team before I say anything for sure, but I think there's a decent chance that I lead with Archaeops. Um, big reason for that being possible leads on his team are Landorus. Basically anything with momentum is an easy thing to say that that could lead and things that also could set up hazards are also positive uh, possible leads here. So Head Smash, Hidden Power, Ice, Endeavors, the moves and Stealth Rock with a Focus Sash. If I lead with this thing, I'm pretty much guaranteed to get Stealth Rocks up because I outspeed almost everything on his team except for Swellow if it's max speed timid um, or Mega Hound Doom, but uh, as I said before, I don't think Mega Houndoom comes. If Mega Houndoom does come, Mega Houndoom will probably switch out because Mega Houndoom can't one-hit KO Archaeops. Um, which is weird. <laughs> I thought it would. But uh, when I looked into it, Timid Flamethrower won't do it. Uh, I guess Dark Pulse might. I, I think I forgot to calc Dark Pulse. Maybe Dark Pulse does. Or it does like 90%. But either way, I'm Focus Sash. So I don't think he would risk it knowing that I have Head Smash and knowing that a lead Archaeops, like I've, in the past, I've brought Scarfed. Uh, and I I like I like the, the potential matchup there. So basically I outspeed everything on his team barring two very unlikely lead scenario options there. Uh, but even if in those circumstances he does lead with those, I still get rocks up one way or the other and it gives me a lot of information, namely about that Swellow. Is it modest? Is it boom burst or is it physical? Um, so that gives me a lot of information that I could be really happy about. And then barring that, I'll outspeed everything else except a another Mon that's Scarf that's faster than me. So it could be, you know, Scarf Landers T as a possibility. Uh, as a possible lead, but in a situation like that, it's probably likely to just 
U-turn on me, and I'm just gonna click Stealth Rock anyway, because even if he does pop off a Z move, for example, in the very first turn, I know I outspeed it next turn, uh, and I'm just gonna pop off that uh, Endeavor on it, because uh, he's gonna bring me down to one HP. So I'm gonna get that Stealth Rock up. We might just exchange rocks if he's gonna lead um, the Landorus on turn one. So I'll pop off a Stealth Rock, he'll pop off a Stealth Rock. He's likely to either hard switch at that point uh, to try and prevent me from knowing more about its item. Uh, but I'll probably end up clicking HP Ice if we exchange rocks. So that gives him the opportunity to switch into something that would tank the Head Smash, which is probably something like the Deancey or maybe the Scissor or something like that. But if he opts to exchange rocks with me and doesn't break my sash, then I have an Endeavor still uh, waiting in the back pocket and I can either switch out Big Burb or really try and force that. Uh, I do really like the idea of Archeops versus Deancey. Um, if Deancey wants to exchange rocks with me or something like that, then uh, it's it might be able to go for the Diamond Storm after, thinking it's going to take me out, focus Sash, live, and get an Endeavor off on it. Something like that. Bring it down to 1 HP, and then it's no longer an issue for Haxorus. So, a lot of ideas going into the Big Burb. Not going to be holding on to it for a long time unless I really need to save the focus Sash and he doesn't have hazards up. Um, but just looking to get rocks up on my end and then bring something down to weak or get a kill if possible uh, We're going we're gonna go to DMX next uh, DMX is pretty standard specially defensive set This is so that I don't just get outright completely annihilated by boom burst I do have a really good switch in for it. It's a really good switch in weirdly enough for the grass type You know who would have thought? Uh, uh, water type being really good switch into a grass type, but you know the poison uh, making that neutral is really helpful and I can get a knockoff on it remove some of its items kind of get an ability to see what it is it's running rocky helmet so it's a good switch into scissor it can um it can do okay against the the como -o. it's not like uh oh I'm gonna switch in I'm gonna like completely like beat this como -o. that's not gonna be how it is I can knock it off to get rid of its item and potentially set up for something else I can spam haze on it to make sure it doesn't get out of hand with its setup because that's tends to be what they do to really get a one-up on you um as a como -o. It, its stats are good but it's not good enough to sweep me without boosts it's got a boost and I'll just spam haze against it potentially get a burn on it with scald uh, and then recover off any damage, potentially getting Rocky Helmet, helmet Chip if it's a physical set. This thing especially defensive enough that it doesn't really worry about Rotoms unless they're like Specs uh, offensive sets. Obviously, it's uh, not a great answer to the Landorus EQ super effective stab against it. Same thing with the Rhyperior. Uh, amazing switch into Houndoom. I'm not even worried about Houndoom at all. Um, almost exclusively because of this Toxapex in practices. Uh, that I had with this, one thing I was noticing is I can switch this in against a Houndoom, even if it clicks Nasty Plot, I can pop off a Scald, hit it for about 45% um, as it goes for the best thing it could have for me. At that point is a Dark Pulse, which will do about 50% to me also, uh, and at that point I could just switch into Remix and be a plus one, plus two Mega Houndoom, and I can Dark Pulse it right back um, and finish it off. So. Or I can go for the flamethrower. Thing is, he does have the Deancey, which is a good switch into his own Mega Houndoom, so that's a good thing to note. Um, his team in general is very good against itself, which makes Ditto like a less strong bring, but it's an amazing scout still, which is why uh, Ditto is coming this week. We're going to move on to the more offensive members of the team. We've got uh, Tefiti here. This is actually not the set I'm going to bring. I forgot to change this back out. We're actually going Expert Belt. Um, but you're kind of seeing what one of the ideas was that I had here for a, for a period of time. Um, and the amount of speed we're running is uh, 158. Short. Why not? Why not, guys? Boom. Boom. Okay. Something like that. Um... Seed Flare, Dazzling Gleam, Hidden Power Fire is the move set of the week. This is because you may have briefly seen the Mew set when I kind of clicked on it. I'm going to go over it, but between what Mew covers and what Tefiti covers, it's pretty much everything. Um, so this Expert Belt set takes hits pretty well, outspeeds everything up to the Landorus uh, at max, excuse me, max speed Landorus. 
Uh, the speed tiers, I will say this. Uh, in my practice, one thing I was noticing is I think his team has a little bit of a one-up on me, but I do have one thing in my favor that is very useful, and that's that the only two... Like, his entire Pokemon fall in this, like, 91 to, like, 80s speed tier. Like, half of his team. Landorus, Roserade, Meloetta, Rotom, como O, all between 91 and 85. Like, a six swing. So... By being 158 speed, I outspeed everything. So that's just like a big number for me to aim to get to. Uh, and then he's got Mega Houndoom, sure. And then he's got Swellow, sure. But neither of those are likely Scarfers because of the speed matchup they have against me. And so I'm not super worried about those either. So 158 is just a nice speed tier to get to. Put the rest in bulk for any of the Pokemon that need it. Um... Expert Belt, because Seed Flare, Dazzling Gleam, Hidden Power, Fire have good coverage, the Expert Belt can switch out, and I might still do that. Like, maybe, maybe I'll switch something else out. Looking at the numbers, I don't necessarily need it, but it does help me to secure an Oko on Rotom Wash, on Como O, um, and on Scizor, uh, which are a big thing that Tefiti is going for here. Scizor, of course, doesn't really threaten Tefiti other than, like, a banded U-turn, but I outspeed it. Uh, and with HP Fire, I can Oko it and don't need to worry about being locked into anything because I'm not choiced in any way. Dazzling Gleam is largely there for the Como O. I really did need fairy coverage on this team. It's four times effective against the Como O. Um, I will outspeed the Como O. And Como O's best coverage for me, if it's physical set, something like the Poison Jab. And if it's a special set, uh, Focus Blast and Flamethrower equally is effective against me. Uh, probably opting for the flamethrower since it's 100% um, accurate. Uh, has the chance for burn, which I guess is nice also, and doesn't have the focus miss issue. Seed Flare is my stab, very powerful, uh, has the opportunity to get a defense drop against anything that switches in that might think it's safe. Scizor cannot switch in against me and be safe even if it does think it is uh, the best answer to a Seed Flare. If the Scizor does switch in, there's a huge chance he just instantly switches out fearing that I'm to scout for the hidden power fire. So if I do see a scenario like that, there's a good chance that I will hard switch out, go straight to DMX, uh, bluffing that I don't have the HP fire, and then securing that kill next time I do get the Tafiti in when he switches. This is just ideas running through my head. Uh, the fourth move and the item, uh, I guess I, I still kind of need to think about. This battle is going to be happening in about 45 minutes, so I'm going to need to get this gen soon. Uh, but I've changed Tafiti's set. Obviously, you saw one of the other options. I might go back to it, so check in on game day to see um, what I end up going with. But uh, Assault Vest with Hidden Power Ground means that actually I can take a hit from Mega Houndoom as well. Hidden Power Ground is a very safe click um, because... Things that might switch in against Shaman predicting what I'm going to click for just get hit either neutral or super effective by the HP ground. So things, for example, like if I'm up against, I don't know, the Landorus and he's predicting the Seed Flare. No, how do I word this? If he predicts me to predict that I'm going to click HP Fire on his incoming Scizor, he might go Deancey and Scizor and Deancey are both hit neutral by the... Uh, hidden power ground and it's good for the mega houndoom i think the reason i ended up switching out is i'm probably getting a little too deep into me thinking what moves are going to happen and that's not the best way to do that so that's probably that i really need to hurry up here i'm very sorry for this being a long episode actually i'm not if you guys want more gba content here you go and if you wanted to skip a lot of this you could have just looked at my pokemon as i clicked through them in the beginning and you didn't need to listen to me talk but i think you guys like to hear me explain my team and my and my thought process here and it helps me to get it out so i'm gonna do it anyway but i'm I'm gonna try and finish up a little faster here. Uh, home Meowner, the Mew, Tanga Berry, to, uh, because he's got a lot of U-turn on his team. Synchronize, obviously, uh, pretty much the only thing I got there. Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Energy Ball, U-turn. I love the coverage on this thing. It's Mew is a hard Pokemon to predict. I think that's why it's a, a good bring for me. I think if I get it in early enough, he'll think it's uh, a defensive Mon or a setup Mon. It's bulky enough just naturally to take hits really well it's iv spread as you can see or ev spread as you can see is this pretty much the same as defeaties almost exactly the same as defeaties and the reason for that is once again outspeeds as fast as pokemon barring the mega hound doom and the swallow uh, it is bulky enough to eat a hit from a 
Specs Modest Boom Burst Swallow and uh, Oko it back. As I mentioned before, like the coverage here is really great. Shaman um, is going to be basically Okoing the Rotom, the Komo O, the Scizor, the Rhyperior, all things that Mew doesn't really love, but Mew does have the flamethrower for the Scizor. So both Mons that are weak to the U-turn uh, both outspeed the U-turn and have super effective coverage to threaten the U-turn. So uh, making Scizor a little bit more of a liability probably than he was hoping for and forcing him to just hard switch in and out of Scizor a lot, scouting for those uh, that coverage. Worst case scenario, the way he scouts for that is to go right into Rotom and I relish the opportunity to get some chip on Rotom. Um, best thing Rotom can do back to a home yawner is Willow me. But then he gets burned back, toxic me, then he gets toxic back. He can pain split if I get too much damage on him. But I do have the super effective coverage with the energy ball. Uh, I have the ice beam for the Landorus, which I outspeed uh, unless it's scarfed. So hoping that that's not the case because a scarf U-turn could be annoying. But because of the Tanga Berry, this is actually one of my best ways to scout for that. So if he opts not to lead Landorus, trying to get the Mew in against a Landorus in like a one for one scenario would be great because then I can see like, do I outspeed you? Yes, you are not Scarfed. You're probably a Zemon or maybe you're Rocky Helmet Defensive or something like that. Um, but I can get more information from that. And then finally, the big boy is here. Toys R Us, Dragonium Z Outrage, Earthquake, Double Dancing. Uh, with once again, 158 speed to outspeed everything that doesn't have a scarf except for the Swellow or Mega Houndoom, both of which either can't or won't run a scarf. So if I get one Dragon Dance up, I outspeed his entire team. Um, things to look out for. Autonomize Komo-O. Uh, defensive Komo-O with a Haban Berry. Uh, Diancy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, anything that's uh, unexpectedly scarfed or buried in one way or another, you might be thinking like, okay, then why don't you run a nerve to not have to worry about the berries? And the main reason for that is Rotom. I really want to be able to uh, get an earthquake off on Rotom. I kind of need to be able to do that because while Outrage does hit it neutrally, it forces me to lock into Outrage. I don't want to have to do that if there's still a Deancey around. If I've scouted and I see that there are no ways to get outsped by either the Mega Houndoom, the Swellow, and I've established that there are not Scarfs on his team, then I don't need Dragon Dance. I can go straight for the Swords Dance at plus two I one hit KO everything on his team. Um, even the Rhyperior with a plus two Devastating Drake. So. Uh, another thing to uh, be on the lookout for is if one of his ways to deal with this in the late game is to consistently pivot in Landorus and then sack something by switching out. I can Z Dragon Dance on it, get rid of all of those negative boosts, give myself another speed boost and another attack boost. So, because um, in a situation like that when I'm already set up to plus two and I'm, I'm thinking that I have game on the line and he's going to be opting to do all those things to try and take that back from me, uh, there's still that option also. Don't see it as a, as a likely bring, but it is an option available to me. What did I press? Why did I do that? Stop it. <laughs> Stop. So, um, yeah, not a ton to say about this. Obviously, the speed tier is important. The rest went just into bulk. Uh, outrage and Earthquake are great for his team. If you resist the Outrage, don't resist the Earthquake. Uh, if you're uh, immune to or... Yeah, if you're immune to the Earthquake, then you don't resist the Outrage. So between the two of those things, that's pretty much the only coverage I need. So Toys R Us just got to find that opportunity to get in and set up on something. Looking at the matchup, the best thing for me to do that against is either the Rotom Wash, if I've established it doesn't have Will-O-Wisp, um, or possibly even in the face of Will-O-Wisp. Uh, I can Dragon Dance on the Willow and then Swords Dance knowing that he probably doesn't have anything for me and that's undone the Willow and put me in a position where I have the speed boost and some of the attack boost I need and then I can start popping off some damage there. Uh, that also prevents me from potentially getting uh, T-Waved, which is one thing I do need to look out for. Uh, T-Wave pack and Mons uh, that could make my day a, uh, a nightish mare, you know what I mean? Maybe that means, maybe I will run, uh, instead of synthesis here, I'll run something like aromatherapy. I don't know, probably not. I'm not gonna do that, I don't think, actually. But Haxorus is 
looking at it now, just looking at his team of 11 before I've actually ended up, you know, before this actual fight when I don't know which six he's gonna bring, to me, on paper, Haxorus looks like my primary win con uh, to finish up the game. But you never know, maybe I need it just to wall break one thing and then Home Yonder can finish it off or Tefiti, something like that. Um, I'm gonna be looking to Home Yowner and Remix to get me a little bit of momentum back in this game. He has a lot of momentum setting Mons, so I can get in on those Mons and do a little bit of uh, momentuming myself. And uh, I think because of all that momentum, it's important that I get rocks up. And then I think I just need to play the slow Whittle game, Whittle down some of his threats. I need to get Deancey into maybe the 50% range so that it's uh, killable by Haxorus gonna want to find out whether or not it's physically defensive, specially defensive, or some ludicrous offensive Deancey set. Uh, not really sure, but this has been a very long locker room, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, the battle is probably gonna be happening in about me. He gets off work in 20 minutes. We'll give that, uh, that gentleman a minute to get home and uh, have some coffee, get prepared for this battle. And uh, so in the meantime, I'm gonna go shower and shave. So when you see me tomorrow, I'll be wearing a different shirt. Let me know in the comment section down below if you would have brought anything different. As always, my name's Jim Little Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time.